The car fell silent as Anlis cruised around the airport. Gabriel stared out the window. He didn't feel vulnerable since he had three people dedicated to his protection crammed into a car with him. It was the next step in this expedition that made his heartbeat speed up and his breath go shallow. He knew what he had to do, but he hated the thought of plunging back into the memories he'd tried so hard to box up and stash away in a dark corner of his mind. After his release from the kidnappers, Mikkel had guided him through the debriefing, saying, imagine you were watching a movie. Tell the story to me, as though it's happening to someone else. Now Gabriel forced himself to remember when he and Raul had walked down the street, trying to conjure up new details that might help identify the man Kodra was meeting today. But he and his cousin had been so drunk that it was a blur. The alcoholic haze hadn't begun to clear until the abductors had forced them into the alley. Since Gabriel had no faces to work with, he focused on voices. He was, once, a musician. Sound and rhythm should be easier for him to decipher than for most people. Except that the only voice he'd heard after that initial encounter had been the disembodied voice that had come over the loudspeaker in his tent. Warped by the electronic audio processing. There had been no accent, no rise and fall, no rhythm, not even a gender. The person had spoken Spanish, but he had always felt that it was not the speaker's native language. Why? He pulled the memories out of the box. At the beginning, the voice had terrified him. It had told him that no one could find him, that he couldn't escape, and that if he behaved, Nothing bad would happen to him. That last had been a lie, of course. After the surgery, the voice had assured him that the doctor was monitoring the progress of his healing so he shouldn't worry. One of the masked figures had indeed changed his bandage morning and night, using a cell phone to snap a photo of his wound each time. When he had complained about the pain, the voice had told him to eat the applesauce they'd brought because there were painkillers mixed into it. He'd finally given in after 12 hours and eaten the drugged food, which had sent him into a nightmare-filled sleep. However, the worst conversation had come 12 hours later when the kidnappers had discovered that he wasn't Raoul. He'd been asleep partially due to the drugs, when the voice had yanked him out of his slumber 